From the gridiron to the diamond, this is more than X's and O's. This is your best Florida sports podcast with CBS 12 News Sports Director John Evanson and producer extraordinaire Sam Sullivan. Well, I feel like I say this every week that we have a special edition of the Best Florida Sports Podcast. No, it's a a little bigger than that. This is the birthday edition of the Best Florida Sports Podcast. We've got Max Shetman today. We're taping on Wednesday. It's his birthday today. I want to wish him a nice happy birthday. Happy birthday, Max. And then we've got John Evanson's birthday coming up as well. This week as well. And Max is just three or four years uh, older than me, so okay. he That's shows fair. me the shows me the ropes. And, and yet, and I have less grace than you do. I know. Is that wild? That, it's incredible. This sports business will do that to you, <laughs> absolutely. I, actually, it's a good thing you mentioned birthdays because, from a Miami Dolphin standpoint, Wednesday was really special. Uh, Max shares a birthday with the late Jason Jenkins, and the mm-hmm. Dolphins had. What is it? A day of service. That's what it was called. A day of service. Beautiful. That was Jason Jenkinson's passion. He was uh, the uh, you know the, the the head of PR, but also uh, was so involved in the community. Made sure the Dolphins made a difference. The players were involved. The media often got involved, and he just. Uh, all through South Florida on Wednesday, uh, there was different volunteer opportunities. And so as we head towards the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, the whole thing, uh, maybe give a couple hours to volunteer and think about Jason Jenkins along the way because he was an awesome guy. Yeah, and like, you know, Evanson, uh, you and I have been down to Dolphins practice before. And, you know, it, it'd feel like every time we were down there, Jason would go like, hey, you guys doing good? What's going on? Like, he'd ask us. He made everyone families. feel like Absolutely. they were the most important person in the right. world. And like football, football was like, you know, obviously like his job and stuff, but like he really cared more about you on a personal level. And I think like that's what made him enjoyable and likable to everybody who covered the Dolphins, was around the Dolphins, even like fans of the Dolphins. He'd be at charity events and stuff like that, get to know Jason. and He had the yeah. best handshake. And, and, and as much as he had a passion for the community and making a difference, man, did he ever have a passion for the Miami Dolphins. And he would be, you know, he would be wanting them to turn this season around big time more than anybody. He's not the only one. Yeah, He's yeah. He's not the only one. Two and five. I hate, we keep meeting this way, guys. We keep meeting this way, but. Under, uh, under bad circumstances, Evanson. Yeah. Oh, my good. Three months after owner Stephen Ross backed up the Brinks trucks for Tua, for Tyreek, extensions the there Baptist with him. The Health Complex. Yeah, you got Mike McDaniel even getting an extension. He's under uh, as much scrutiny as we've ever seen uh, in this market. Two and five, and they get the Bills next. Worst possible scenario as a next opponent, I would think. What do you guys think yeah, of that? Yeah, this is uh, not going to be an easy game. It obviously looked pretty rough last time we saw them. Of course, that's when Tua got hurt, but regardless of that, he threw three interceptions beforehand, one of them being a pick six. So, I mean, you, That was you, the concussion game. Yeah, you, week two. You, you kind of need some luck on your side this week. You need some things to not fall in line for the Bills, for the Dolphins to pull one out. Well, it also doesn't help. Like, I think... In normal seasons, like, okay, like, you know, Dolphins on a roll, like, we're going up to Buffalo, like, going to be a tough test. You're not really sure how it's going to go, but I think just the way that the Dolphins are entering this week against the Bills, it's like, holy cow, like, we're going to Buffalo with how poorly we've been playing. McDaniel called it, I love, the, my favorite quote today uh, was he called it a uh, stadium of, of, of confidence, a stadium of confidence of fans, or something like that. Like it's like the whole fan base is pretty convinced that uh, you know the Dolphins are gonna are gonna lose as they as they. Win. Can you blame them though? I feel like if well, you're twelve or thirteen. I feel like if you're a Buffalo fan, you're like. You're hitting the you're hitting the tailgates. You're jumping through the tables. Easy check mark dub. Like I feel like there is not a lot of concern on the Buffalo side. Oh, uh, it breaks Stephen Ross. Well, let's. I just wanted for one more thing about Stephen Ross here. The guy is 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 such a passionate football fan. He all this money he spends. And a good friend of his, Rick Hara, who, who does Inside the Billions for us every every week, spoke to me this week in that segment about 
Stephen Ross's mindset right now after spending all this money? Uh, you know, he's he, he's into racing, he's into tennis, he does so much. He was originally he's helping in building West Palm Beach real though. estate. Yeah, he, he's a Palm Beach resident. But uh, here's Rick Haro on Stephen Ross and how he must be doing right now with this two and five situation. Here's the deal, and this is really important for legacy. Steve Ross is one of the biggest football fans you'll ever meet. He's getting up there a little bit. He wouldn't deny that. And it's more important to him, I guarantee you, to win a Super Bowl, be competitive, win multiple Super Bowls than almost anything else. Got a great legacy. He's a master builder, master developer. He's a iconic race uh, facility developer, tennis facility developer, built a facility with his own money. Here's the problem. Here's my 50-year anniversary hat of the perfect season. Well, I read the memo, came back after law school. Every year it was going to happen, except it didn't happen. And so the bottom line is there is a tremendously unmet set of expectations. And unlike real estate, you can't just buy it. Uh, that's for sure. There has just been no real synergy, guys. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the defense was keeping them in games earlier in the season, but the offense couldn't do anything with, with like 4,000 quarterbacks that they tried while Tua was out. Then Tua comes back, does things with the offense that we haven't seen in so long, and then ultimately in the end, it, it's a mistake uh, with the safety and the defense that fails them in the end. What, what did you see from that game, Sam? Yeah, it, it just – there was a lot of chunk plays that the Dolphins had. It, it looked well on offense, but they just – once they got down, you know, late in the game and the game started to get a lot closer, they just really couldn't connect on opportunities that seemed like it was right in front of them. And like you mentioned, that safety just did not help them really at all. And it was kind of, it kind of was just all of a ripple effect, really. They couldn't get anything rolling late in that game. And of course, the Cardinals, I mean, Kyler Murray in that game and that loss, a 28-27 loss, if we haven't mentioned it yet, uh, last-minute field goal. But Kyler Murray, of course, starts connecting with the guy who I traded away in fantasy because I had gotten sick of him, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., and then, of course, he lights it up. That well, was It was my fault. Well, it's funny yeah. that you bring up yeah. this because, Evanson, you, uh, you need to learn this. How about a little patience? Yeah. A little patience, I'm especially with patient. the fantasy guy. Yeah, I mean, I dump it, Marvin Harrison Jr. a little early. That that it, rookie it, mistake on your part. Well, let's see. We'll see. We'll know if if he continues to dwindle after this. If it was just like that was his big Dolphins yeah. game. That was his big Dolphins game where, of course, he burned us. Yeah. That was the Mason Rudolph game uh, for, let's go for Rudolph. Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> um, but to kind of like bounce off like the patient part, you know, Rick kind of brought up a good point. Like, you know, you can spend money on players and stuff like that and whatever, but. You know, just because you spend a lot of money doesn't mean you're going to get the results that you want. Mm -hmm. And I think... 13.9 points per game. Right. I think, I think Average so far. I yeah. think the three of us have watched enough football that NFL owners, they get antsy. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's second season, third season. If you're not delivering results... Yeah. And granted, like, yes, Mike McDaniel has been successful with the Dolphins and yada, yada. But that can kind of be forgotten. It's more of like, what have you done for me now? Mm -hmm. So... A question that kind of goes through my mind, I know like he's kind of said, you know, he has the back of Mike McDaniel, but if the season continues the way that it is going, do you think that Steven Ross could pull the plug on Mike McDaniel because he's just run out of patience? I don't think so. I think he has the excuse of Tua going down um, that completely changed how he coaches his team, how he selects plays. So I, I don't think he's out this year. Well, I don't think necessarily – I think he's sick of excuses by now because it's been year after year after year after year. But I don't think McDaniel necessarily would be – the guy, because McDaniel and Tua are are kind of like uh, a package deal now, right? Like right. those two, Tua and him just work so well together. Greer has, we've talked about it so much on this podcast, uh, the way this team was constructed was obviously Four faulty, uh, but also right. faulty in so many ways without not having a backup quarterback. Uh, a lot of guys, uh, I mean, people are dealing with injuries all over the place. But this quote from McDaniel actually – goes with this. Uh, he, he said, McDaniel said he feels the worst when he has to apologize to Stephen Ross after these losses. And he says that he knows, he and Stephen know that they are aligned in that it is the process. Um, he never mentioned Greer in this uh, scenario on Sunday either. Like he, he looked as depressed as we've ever seen him, but he was focused on 
Stephen Ross in this situation and having to talk to Stephen Ross about it. A lot of the times Greer will bring McDaniel, uh, lump him in with like moves that they make and stuff like that. No mention of Greer. It was Ross and McDaniel. So I, I tend to think that Greer is the guy who's in trouble here if things don't improve. What do you think? Like, it's also a little bit weird that you have a coach telling a two and five team, trust the process. Trust the process. I think people are getting sick of a lot of these little yeah. like, like uh, little cliche, cliche things out things. there. And again, yeah. like you did, Sam, you did bring it up. Like, okay, like two has been out. Like that does throw a wrench in the plan. But as much as it's thrown a wrench in the plan, like not having capable plan B. Right. I don't really know if trusting the process is not having a good plan B. <sighs> Well, the pro- I mean, the process has such a thin line of, uh, th- there's, there's no room for error now. I mean, they, they literally now have to go eight and two to guarantee themselves a playoff spot. Seven and three is still kind of iffy. Like, th- like, so what is the process here? Like, th- I mean, it got obviously disrupted by Tua's concussion, but you can't be an NFL team and not know that players are going to go down and you're going to deal with this for four or five games in a season. So this is the first time that they have been in trouble this early in the season. Normally they just kind of like at the end of the year, lose the last game or the second to last game or, or lose the wild card game. And everyone throws their arms up and say, Oh, just another dolphin season. Now it's two, two and five. Like they, you, they already are in trouble. Last year the you whole, went to Kansas city for yeah. the, in the playoffs. And now it's like, okay, like, mm, mm. I don't even know if I can see the, the playoffs in this area code. Steven Ross has the whole season now to reflect on what the heck am I supposed to do next? Like you said, what is the process? Is it with this season, are we going to try to continue to get better? Or is it just like, yo, let's just make it through this season and we'll reevaluate next year? I think right now it's all in. A win in Buffalo changes everything, and that's a lot to ask for, Sam. It is, and it could have been a lot easier with a win against the Cardinals, a win that they should have had. They should have had a win against the Colts. They should have been able to beat the Titans. I mean, their record should be flipped right now based on the easy schedule that they had. And it's only going to get harder down the road. And they weren't really set up going into the season to look like a better team. We all knew coming into the season they were either going to be the same or they were going to regress. They lost huge pieces on defense. They couldn't bring anybody in through free agency that was going to bolster up that side of the ball. And it just hasn't really looked well up to this point. So it's going to be very interesting. Well, and that's that's one of the cases, like, backing up the Brinks drugs. Like, right. you know you got to pay to a Tyreek got an extension, obviously paying G- uh, Jalen Waddle his money. Like, yeah. you're Odell have- Beckham Jr., disaster move so can, far. Can we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he going to do anything? Because I'm not really sure, like, River, what the heck is going River on. River He played 11 snaps. No, yeah, you know, he's dropped balls. River Craycraft is back this week. He instantly goes into that number three wide receiver spot. No question. No, Absolutely. No Absolutely. question. Especially with the non production from Odell. Like, yeah. okay, if Odell, like, you know, good four or five catches, good slot guy numbers, like, mm-hmm. all right, meshes well with the offense, but there has been zero production from that. Tua called him my guy, the great white hope. That's what Tua called River Craycraft. Hell of a hell of a nickname. Yeah. I mean, Is that Tua, what you're gonna call me? I that he stole that from what I call you in the newsroom. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, Chris Perkins, he has oh, had boy, the, his article. He's been on fire lately, and I don't think he enjoys it because he really wants to cover. A he's the epitome team. of positivity of the Dolphins. He just tells it like it is, Chris Perkins. So I, I, I hooked up with him and asked him to tell it me li- like it is. What an Awesome segue to Chris. Joining me now is Sun Sentinel columnist, Dolphins columnist, Chris Perkins. And I feel like I always have to say to you, I'm sorry you need to join us under these circumstances. Uh, that's 2024, right? I mean, the <laughs> circumstances of, except for after Jacksonville. That, but those were happy days. Yeah. Other than that, it's been kind of, uh. And this, this rain coming down now, it's a perfect yeah. way to describe perhaps the that's mood right. of Dolphin fans right now. Yeah. And it doesn't get any easier facing the Buffalo Bills this week of all teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, Tua is 1-7 and seven against Buffalo. I think Josh Allen has won like 13 of his last 15 against them or something like that. 
the Bills own the Dolphins, and, and I think their best path this week is probably going to be the big play, right? Because that's what's been missing from this offense, that big over-the-top play from Tua to Tyreek, Tua to Jalen Waddle. Teams have taken that away. They're playing that too high safety, too deep safety defense. The other thing they're doing is being very aggressive with them at the line of scrimmage. I would expect Buffalo will be aggressive with them at the line of scrimmage, also trying to throw off the timing of this timing precision pass game. Well, you asked a really good question in the press conference, the Mike McDaniel press conference, as you always do. You asked if uh, it's better for him to sort of uh, approach this as a team that's uh, been their daddy yeah. uh, right. for the past uh, few years or just another team. And, uh, you know, you could dissect that Mike McDaniel uh, answer. Maybe it would take a few hours and some, and some people because it was, it was long and winding. But what did you get from what he told you? I got from what he told me, and, and I didn't use the daddy phrase, by the way. That, that was nice. That's <laughs> nice that you threw that in there. Um, I, I got from it that we need to focus on this as a one-game entity, not as we've you know been owned by Buffalo. They've lost their last eight up in Buffalo. He's not going to harp on that. He's not going to mention that. It's this is one game, one game we need to win. And he also said we need to focus on ourselves and, and not so much what Buffalo uh, does to us. I thought it was uh, – interesting answering uh, a question of my colleague Dave Hyde that Mike McDaniel said Buffalo is a team that kind of sits back and picks its spots it allows you to beat yourself mm -hmm. and we've seen that with the Dolphins right with the penalties and the turnovers and things like that so I thought that was very interesting the Dolphins do need to clean up a lot of stuff having said that John the offensive line has played well penalties have come down the last few weeks but they still can't get that victory. Isn't that what, what is the most frustrating uh, yep. here, especially after this last loss, is you're right. I think it was like two penalties or something. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and, and um, you know, Tua was back. We were seeing right. things on offense that we hadn't seen in, in weeks. Yep. And then that safety happens. Yeah. It's something we haven't seen yet. And then the defense can't, yep. can't hold the, uh, the water in the, uh, in, in the fish bag and, right. and, and the goldfish dies. <laughs> That's, right. Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. And you know what? It, it's... <laughs> You talk about this team not beating itself. Tua has three fumbles, and and the safety, you know that like the ball can't just glance off of his hand. So I do agree with Mike McDaniel. They need to focus on themselves. Like you've got to be on top of every little thing. Again, as the penalties go down, uh, now comes the fumble by Tua. So you've got to be on top of every little detail. Now with everything that we've seen, especially coming off this last game, where where those things don't seem even close to being fixed, it's yeah. it's it's more like. Um, I guess uh, complimentary football, it yeah. comes back to that, yeah. right? Like if yes. it's not one thing, it's another thing. Yeah. Do you think it's possible that this team can get everything together at once mm. that they need to against the Bills? Mm. <laughs> not against the Bills. I mean, that, you know what? And here's the funny thing. That should have happened, John, during the bye week. You do your self-scouting, right? And, yeah. and the t two games afterwards, you that's when you need to work out all of these little things but that didn't happen for whatever reason and now you're going into buffalo just as bad as you were three or four weeks ago this isn't the game to get stuff right that was last game and two games ago it, it's really a, a a situation of good luck to the dolphins hopefully the big plays come back yeah. the big plays john they take a lot of stink off of the other stuff that you do and once the big plays leave it's tough so that's what i was going to ask you is uh just assuming that everything's not going to be perfect in this game yep. and that buffalo is going to pounce on mistakes yep. what are like one or two key things that absolutely you mentioned a few yep. but when you say big plays who are you looking for to be absolutely on their game this week oh easy it, it's tyreek it's Tua, it's Jalen Waddle, it's Raheem Mostert, it's Mike McDaniel. Those are the guys who don't come through in the big games for the Dolphins. And you go back and you look at San Francisco two years ago. You, you look at the Chargers two years ago. You look at the Buffalo games. You look at the Kansas City games. You look at the Baltimore games. Their big players don't come through, and that's been the big problem. All right. Well, thank you so much. And it got yeah. sunny How about that? Maybe during this segment. The so there you go. That could be a good omen. Thank you, Chris Perkins. Thanks. And don't forget, Deep Dive. Listen to Deep Dive, Chris Perkins' podcast. Sometimes it's with Dave Hyde. That's, yep. Sometimes it's with uh, David da Peronis. Dave Peronis. Yep, every, but, every Tuesday at noon on sunsentinel.com. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Perkins. Ooh, and now a spooky Halloween segment you guys, from. You guys don't know a really good scary movie? Scary? What's a good scary uh, movie? The Dolphins 2024 season. Ooh, is that Scary hey Movie 5 with the Wayan brothers? Like is that, that them who did that movie? Like it. Yeah. No, it's not. They didn't do Scary Movie, did they?
I don't know. Scary movie. The Way in Brothers? This, this is an M. Night Shyamalan special. Yeah, yeah. What's well, my favorite was... Well, before we get off topic, yeah, uh, yeah. Scary Movie Three: The Goat of Scary Movies. Okay, what's your favorite? What's your favorite Halloween movie? I don't really watch scary movies. Oh God! Oh, that is the lame, what is I'll watch lame it, I'll watch thing. It in broad daylight. He's over here cracking horror movie jokes. He's like, oh, I don't really he watch horror the movies. Charlie, Come on, Sam. Charlie Brown pumpkin patch. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For My, sure. I, the scariest movie of all time. I, I, it's got to be The Exorcist, right? Like, that's the craziest. Have you guys yeah, seen? that's fair. I, I put it up there. Craziest. The 1973, yeah. the original with I mean, the that Blair. Is, you know, not a big fan of the Blair Witch Project? Is that named after her? No. No, okay. No. Okay. Some so, college <laughs> schmucks that were out in a, a right. forest that was like, oh my God. We're just doing word this. association? Right. Yeah, pretty much. Well, speaking of word association, I, I kind of want to introduce a new segment. You know, it's Halloween, so let's... Let, yes. It's called Scary or Not. Okay. Your your face? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, snap! No, no, let's do it. Some, let's somebody kicked this man off the podcast. <laughs> uh, no, so, you know, scary or not, I'm going to throw a couple things out there. It okay. could be scary good, scary bad. I love I'll it. let you guys decide. Cool. So the first one we'll start off with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Obviously, the Dolphins have had trouble with this. Yeah. Yes. Bunch of injuries. Yes. The Miami Dolphins defensive line, scary or not? Scary. It's very scary. They've only had, what, nine sacks this season so far? You have Bradley Brutal. Bradley Chubb is not even close to coming back nope. yet. Uh, Jalen Phillips is out for the season. Poor guy again. He, he, and so you got, what do you have, Ogba, right? You got, who do we have, Emmanuel Ogba? Who else? Who else? Boy, Let's Campbell. name them all. Uh, I got, I got, I got to remember now. I'm losing my mind Campbell here. In there. You got Campbell, Clay's Campbell's in there. Oh, there you go, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But like, and you honestly, got Chop Robinson. We can't forget him, but he's still he's kind of struggling out. a little yeah, bit, yeah. you know. So Tyus Bowser. It's it's just it's just one of those things. See, I couldn't even think about how sad that is, though. That's scary. That that I, you I, can't name I, the Dolphins' the defensive line. line. Is, I mean, I was just trying to think of edge rush. Right. Yeah. So far, it, they've looked like a group of ghosts. You right. cannot see them. Right. Yeah, it's like Scooby-Doo, like they're trying to, like an old Scooby-Doo cartoon, they're trying to tackle, they're trying to sack the quarterback, and he's just going right through right. them because they're ghosts. I like that. Yeah. See, yeah. I li- see, I like this, I like this concept. All right, yeah, I like it. <laughs> the Miami Dolphins offensive line. Obviously, we know shuffling a little bit going on, but they did well against the Cardinals. Scary or not? Not, not scary, but not, not scary good or scary bad. You know, kind of right down the middle. I'm, I'm pretty neutral with them. We were expecting, once again, another season where it wasn't going to look good for this offensive line, and I'm, pl- I'm pleasantly surprised. You don't know with this offensive line if you're getting a trick or a treat oh. because, like, sometimes, uh, you know, they're, they're, able, they're tricked. Sometimes they are tricked. And, I set and, this and they man give... up for so much success with this segment. <laughs> but, but they've been somewhat of a treat because we were expecting the very worst out of this offensive line. It did not look uh, fantastic in any of the preseason games. Uh, Teron Armstead has stayed healthy, knock on wood, uh, my head. Uh, but uh, so, so far, the offensive line has actually been a pleasant surprise. Yeah. So not scary. Yeah, I agree with that. And of course, you know, HN had a, had a heck of a game against the Cardinals, almost 100 yards rushing. Yeah. Uh, so I think like being able to get him going, obviously he really hasn't been himself this year. So I think like this could have been the, the, the get right game for Good. Devon HN. I like sure. this game. I like it. All I like right. it. Can we do more? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, we got some more. Yeah. Oh. That's my scary cat. Oh, God. Oh, you know, oh, God. Well, speaking of black cats, anytime yeah. the Dolphins run into Josh Allen, black cat magic. So yeah. facing Josh Allen in Buffalo, is that scary or not scary? That, it's as scary as it gets. That is scary. That is scarier that. than The Exorcist 1973, the movie that yeah. I say was the well, scary. Like Evanson just keeps dating time? himself. And <laughs> I, t- <laughs> I did not watch that as a uh, newborn baby, but uh, you but took your first high school are, date to that movie. There are there are things called uh, uh, you know Netflix and like DVDs that yeah. these movies are VHS. actually stored on. Right, you can okay. still to this day watch them. Okay. Do you have a VHS? <laughs> Chess player at your house? Uh, I have it all. I have a whole setup uh, with a Betamax. Wow. I have a uh, uh, rabbit ears. I've got a Well, if anybody DVD needs video player. digitizing, uh, make sure to call John Evanson. I got everything you need, for sure. All right, Josh Allen, scary or not scary? Yeah, scary bad for the Miami Dolphins going into this game. We kind of talked about 
you know, what they've looked like against this team in the past. I've got some stats here. Oh, I love the Josh I love Allen good stats. And I love good stats. In, in 2023, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Josh Allen against the Miami Dolphins in two games, 51 of 63, 679 yards, six touchdowns, two interceptions on top of a passing, on top of a rushing touchdown. In 2022 through three games, over 1,000 yards, mm. nine touchdowns, and 144 rushing yards. So he knows how to dominate. He's got the witch's brew he the for the Dolphins. Ooh, yeah, he, it's in his Gatorade bottle. He just drinks it the whole game. It's, in, it's Josh's secret stuff. Josh's juice. What's the stuff that, that Aaron Rodgers has been drinking lately? Yeah, yeah it does the uh, water and cayenne pepper. I wonder if... It helps with pain. I wonder if... No, uh, no, no, you no. know what? Aaron Rodgers... Trash. I'll just say you're it right, right now. There's trash. no way they're drinking the same If you're a Josh thing. Allen yeah. fan, do not listen to anything Aaron Rodgers is saying. <laughs> Josh Allen's drinking water and paprika. <laughs> oh, see, he's got his own spice going yeah. on. I like that. All yeah. right, I got one more for you. Okay. He just drinks pure wing sauce, like buffalo. Buffalo yeah. wing sauce? Yeah. Honestly, I'm that's great. that's like I, Superman powers. I, 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 yeah, just yeah, pounding yeah. buffalo I wing sauce. I get on the I get on the pod. <laughs> oh, see, there you go. I like that energy. All right, last one. Oh, we have another one. Obviously, we have NFL trade deadline coming up. As a Dolphins fan, mm -hmm. is it scary or not trying to figure out what the Dolphins will do? Sellers, or will they try to be buyers to try to improve this team and this season? I, I don't even want to go there yet. This was a good, it's, it was a good idea, but I still feel like discussing this when they're two and five. Obviously, if they lose the next few games, I think that. I mean, I will say they, they should definitely think about unloading some of these uh, guys. When is the you know, trade you got it's the fifth. Fifth. It's next week. Next week. They can't. They, they still have to. They still. But have it's to. it. Well, we bring it up. It's about right. patience. Do yeah. you have patience, or is it like you're selling it? You're just selling whatever draft picks that you can get just to get something going to try to improve next season. I think. I think that if they if they lose, but it's a game where it's super close, and you can actually see some productivity from both sides of the ball I don't think they do anything but if they lose Stamp and it's by a lot I think they're sellers okay. I think they move away from some because like when you look at it when you look at it, we talked about it if if you look at the Dolphins you could go out trade for a pass rusher mm -hmm. obviously they need it Zedaria Smith of the Browns great pass rusher mm -hmm. obviously the way Cleveland season he could be available yeah or you trade Ogba for some draft picks to a team that might need a pass rush. We already talked about how scary the uh, the D line Ooh. was, and now you're giving up guys. You're hey, giving up. It's, it's just an option. It's the name of the game. Just yeah, I, I feel like uh, it's that is a scary premise. Yes, I like that. It's a scary premise, but my opinion on it is just keep on keeping on with the season and uh, and, and uh, see, see where it gets you because Mike McDaniel rhymed off a whole bunch of seasons when he was, you know, two and six and three and seven. They figured things out. It's, the NFL is so weird. You can, you can string off a bunch of wins. These injuries are happening to everybody. The remaining opponents, um, you know, aren't that daunting when you look at the overall record. Did you, did you ever get that? Did you see that stat? The overall record of the remaining opponents – uh, is a losing record. Like, it's it's like 33 and 45 or something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I mean, looking at the schedule now, they have the Raiders, the Patriots, both under 500 records, the Jets twice, both under, obviously under 500, Browns under 500. And there's like, when you already like listing these off, there's a lot of question marks with these teams. Obviously, mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers with the Jets, the Raiders, they don't know what's going on quarterback. Do they want Gardner Minshew? Do they want Aiden O'Connell? Nobody knows what the heck's going on out there. Obviously, the Patriots, is Drake May going to be healthy for them? Mm -hmm. Are they going to go Jacoby Brissett? Yeah. Like, so when you, when you list out the schedule, Obviously, there's a lot of questions with the team. But as you said, the mm -hmm. NFL is a crazy world. It is weird. Yeah, I could picture something. This team has so much talent on it. I, I still i am holding out hope that they could come back together at some point and do something to salvage the season. But it all starts with the Buffalo Bills. Who did you talk to this week, Sam? I talked to our good friend Mike Catalana. I spoke to him. Love Mikey. that guy. When Love him. We were did you know he invented the, uh, the chicken wing? Chicken wing, the chicken, chicken wing, wing. Or, the, or the buffalo wing. <laughs> the buffalo wing. Yes. Yeah, he did not. I just, no. in case you thought I was, uh, you know, no. I'm, I'm joking around. Let's, but, let's, let's throw it yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. So, he knows his stuff, though, You know, last Bills. time I spoke to him was, of course, before the Dolphins-Bills game in week two. I remember it well. Yes. It just, 
a completely different looking matchup going into it and now it's they get to face two again but it's under a much different circumstance you know coming back from a concussion it's only going to be a second game back so we kind of spoke about that and you know how the bills have progressed this season and looked the way that they look another win for the bills very familiar territory for you guys you know big performances across the board james cook having a huge game you know well, what do you what do you see from this team at this point that's, you know, helping them succeed the way that they are? You know, it's really interesting when you look at the Bills offense, right? They started out in this idea. They keep saying, you know, everybody eats, everybody eats because Stefan Diggs was gone. And it looked really good for three games. <clears throat> they won, including a win against the Dolphins. And they spread the ball around. They had the lead and everybody was happy. Then they went on the road and got whipped by the Ravens. And then they lost to the Texans. And it just didn't look right, like they were behind a little bit and they couldn't really get it going. So they went out and made the deal. They got Amari Cooper and brought him into the mix. Um, but to your point about where they are offensively, I think they have found an identity, which is what every team's looking for. Cook can run. When he's been out, they have gotten good play from the backups. Josh Allen is playing outstanding. The wide receivers are making plays, and the hope is that a guy like Cooper can elevate that group. Now, he had a nice first game, didn't do much in his second game, but they know who he is. So, quite honestly, they have a pretty good balance between offense, um, running the ball, and throwing the ball. And their offense, when it's going, looks pretty good. Now, he had one interception this past game, his first of the season, yeah. 14 touchdowns, only one interception up to this point. What do you think it is about his decision-making that's different from this year than in years past? I mean, it is definitely better. I think he trusts the offense. I think Joe Brady has put him in good spots. And let's just boil it down to this. Dolphin fans have seen Josh a lot. And you think of Josh Allen as something's not there. He takes off. He's running right. He's throwing the ball. He still does all that stuff. But honestly, the old phrase some, some analysts use of taking the cheese, like, when James Cook or Dalton Kincaid or any of the receivers are five yards in front of him and open, he just throws the ball. Like he has taken the simple plays and not had to force it at other times. They've run it well. They've put themselves mostly in a good spot on third downs where it's not, hey, Josh, you got to make something happen, even though he's done that. So I think the decision making is better. He's been put in a better place. And then let's be quite honest. He's also gotten lucky a few times, right? A few bad throws you make, the guy doesn't catch it, it gets deflected, it gets called back for a penalty. Um, I think every quarterback gets that. So we finally had one this past week. Cooper slipped a little. Maybe Allen didn't quite have it read right. Defender jumped it. There's his first interception. Um, and what's funny is, you know how players will always say, we don't read, we don't pay attention, we don't care. They all do. And Josh knows the narrative on him is great player turns it over too much. And I think he's consciously saying, I don't want that to be the narrative. So he's been smarter and better with the ball. And it sure helps your offense when, you know, you're not giving it to the other team. Now, sticking with those buzz receivers, of course, you just mentioned Khalil Shakir having a, you know, a huge week, nine receptions, 107 yards, Keon Coleman, five for 70 with a touchdown. What have you seen from their development as they've, you know, grown into bigger roles as we progress through the season? You know, what's funny. The two guys are very different in many ways. Um, you know, Keon is known as, well, neither of them are known to be the fastest guys in the world, right? If you look at 40 times, Shakir doesn't have a physical skill on the, you know, when you go to the combine that really jumps out as you go, we got to grab this guy when it is except he's a great route runner, great use of his body, will run after the catch. Their similarities, they both catch the ball, run after the catch, which is something this team has lacked. Uh, Keon, not known for speed. People are saying he can't separate. Sometimes separation is up high, and he goes up and gets it. And while he hasn't been perfect, it's funny, the number this week, we always talk about our podcast, Buffalo Plus Podcast, of needing receivers that are dependable. And we will use the term five catches for 70 yards, which is exactly what Keon had last week, because that's the kind of guy, maybe not superstar numbers, 
But boy, you put up five and 70 every week, you're going to have a heck of a season. 100 catches over 1,000 yards, right? That's the way it goes. Keon is getting better and better. And he's a rookie, you know, eight games into this. And Josh Allen trusts him. He absolutely trusts Shakir. And he has learned quickly to trust Keon. So honestly, now with if Cooper develops in the offense, he's already proven his way in the league, it's going to be a pretty substantial top three wide receivers for the Bills. Now, going back the last time we spoke, you know, it was just after week one, both the Bills and the Dolphins were coming off of some wins. Mm -hmm. And a lot has changed since then. You know, that was the game, Bills-Dolphins, where Tua got injured, but beforehand through three interceptions, did not really look that well. Um, Josh Allen didn't really have to do much. Only 139 passing yards, but James Cook was kind of all over the place. Three total touchdowns, you know. What do you take away from that game that the Bills can use going into this game where it's it's similar now they're playing Tua again? Yeah. I mean, look, Tua's had some pretty good games against the Bills. You know, he's thrown for a lot of yards in some games, played them tough that one year late in the season in Orchard Park. It does just feel like Josh Allen has the Dolphins number. So to have a game like that, where Josh, where they won pretty comfortably and Allen didn't have to do as much was a real change for them against Miami. And that's when I said they really do feel comfortable going either way. Like Allen can light you up 300 yards, multiple touchdowns, making plays with his legs. But in this case, Cook was really good. The ground game was good. They like that identity of being able to do that. I think around the league, you see that too. Like teams want to be able to run the ball when they need to. So that first game I thought was a bit of a message from the bills, just in a sense of, okay, everybody thinks Diggs is gone. Poyer's gone. Hyde's gone. These guys have left. Bills are taking a step down. I think it was a mindset of we still own the division. And then they went and beat the jets and it felt like we still own the division. So I do think that is in their mind. Um, and I, and that game specifically, like I said, the idea that they can win and win comfortably against Miami without Allen having to play like that, I think goes a long way for this team. Going back to the now, you know, this is a, um, you know, what looks like an easy game, easier game for the Bills and the Dolphins just really looking to claw back and kind of get a wind under, under their belt. What is your score prediction for this week's game? I got to tell you, um, the, the Bills should be, you know, the teams don't think like scared, worried, that kind of thing. They're focused on the way they do it. But from the outside, when we analyze a game, you look at numbers. I think it's hard to look at the numbers of the Dolphins. With Tua out, you know, their offense was, especially the passing game, was terrible. Like they just got nothing. With Tua out there, they looked better against the Cardinals, certainly throwing the ball, great on third downs, like, they still have talent. A-Chan had a big game the first game. Like, he can run the ball. And I think that's a desperate football team. Desperate coming into this game. If they'd have beaten the Cardinals, they could have hung in there. Maybe they're even if they lose to the Bills or 3-5, and five, they fight for a wild card. All those things. I mean, let's be honest. They got, they got to win this game if they're going to have a shot to do anything. That's where it stands right now. I mean, the Bills are head and shoulders above everybody for the division. So, I know it's easy to look at the records and numbers and say, oh, the Bills should run away with it. I don't see it for this week. I, I see it being a close game. I think Miami comes into this, anything they've got. I mean, I know they've got injuries on defense. That seems to always be the case with the Dolphins. But I think this is a closer game. I, I haven't picked a score yet. Um, there's a couple of things I want to see first after after the workouts, but – um, you know, like Terrell Bernard, who's a really good player at linebacker back, at least on Wednesday, uh, limited practice. He's an important player for them. Makes a big difference. Missed that Kansas city playoff game last year that cost them. But honestly, I see this as a, if it's a bills win four or five points, I think it's a close game. I think Miami hangs in there. Well, and you know, any four, he's right. Four or five points could make the difference. And for the dolphins, they have to take advantage of every single little thing almost play a perfect game special teams has to be on their game braxton barrios of course 
uh, out. injured out, I believe, for the season. Uh, Eskridge took over as the as the kick return Dynamic specialist. Kickoff. He is so excited. I, I caught up with him in the Dolphins locker room. I snuck up on him and said, "Yeah!" And it scared him, and it was so funny. But then I said he did a one-on-one Imagine with me. anything spookier than John Evanson sneaking <laughs> up on him. Yeah. Here I am with what uh, the kick returner extraordinaire. You're the producer, producer extraordinaire. Not he's, quite where he's at. But you guys are equal with what you do. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's, hear, let's hear what Eskridge had to say. So nobody wants to see anybody get hurt, but with Braxton going down, uh, it gave you a big opportunity with kick returns. Uh, there's some uh, fun stuff to watch, especially this season. I'm sure it was fun to be a part of too, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, all our prayers go out to Braxton. You know, obviously we want him to be able to be healthy and be a part of this team, you know what I'm saying? But this league is one man down, next man up, you know, and I happen to be in that, that position. So it's really a blessing overall. Seems like you were licking your chops, especially with the new rules. So what do you see there in front of you, uh, especially in 2024 with the new uh, kick return rules? Yeah, definitely. This while I was in Seattle before I came here, um, you know, I've I've been just licking my chops the whole time, knowing that this is built for my, my skill set, built for the type of player that I am. So, yeah, I look forward to making big plays for the Dolphins this year. And special teams so important, especially when you're taking it on a team like the Bills, who uh, Mike McDaniel, uh, your head coach, was saying you just have to you – you can't make a mistake in every little – opportunity you have to take full advantage of and I guess that's your mindset uh, every time you, you touch the football right definitely yeah you know we're, we're professionals you know we have to be prepared you know we gotta we gotta do the things that, that make the game easier on game day so you know everything especially with the, how the season is going you know we just got to be honed in on our details honed in on the things that we need to do so that we can accelerate these wins I'm sure you've heard about how crazy the crowds are in, in Buffalo and uh, coach McDaniel was saying today it's just a very ultra confident crowd as the team is as well so yeah. what do you well, what's it like playing in that environment and how much does that motivate you to just do something big yeah. I, I feel like big time players make big time plays and big time moments you know so we gotta learn how to quiet the noise um, you know because every role game is gonna be a tough game this year so we just gotta be able to quiet the noise and then just be able to do our job and not do anything outside of that yeah and I think this is a big opportunity for Tua to really you know, come back out of the gates. This is, you know, second game back, big opponent. I really think he could take advantage here of a big opportunity. And I've got a prediction. We're going to get to score predictions. I think he can go over 300 yards. We saw him do things. We saw things in the offense that we haven't seen in weeks. It was, and it was like a professional NFL offense. Yes, finally. And he's got a new haircut Ooh. this week. Uh, he looks kind of like he had it kind of wrapped up. You can see coming up the top. It was kind of like Ice Spice. You know that color that red? You compared to a, compared to a little he has the same ice color ice. hair as you now, actually, oh. Tua does. Little red? Little red action yeah, going on? Saw the it's podcast. more of a strawberry blonde. He can't really get I it. I mean, redheads are dangerous, so <laughs> careful. That's why maybe he's trying to portray that that fear, like, don't mess with this redhead. The fear, the scare. Like the that. fear, oh, the no. scare. All right, well. So he, yeah, yeah, he, he could do, he, he could, one more game in, Buffalo, motivate. More he comfortable. Is, Right. Not happy. No. He, he's he is, so, and he's one of the most competitive guys. So yeah, this could be this could fuel him even more. For sure. It's, an, it's yeah. another it's another week of of knocking off the rust. I don't care what anybody says. It takes a couple games to get back into NFL game shape. Like For you sure. can practice all you want, but the speed of an NFL game and situations are different. So mm -hmm. I I think. I kind of agree with you. I can see go, Tua going off for of 300. Yeah. Let's, do let's do score predictions. Well, well you know, we, as we, know as we bring up every week, us yeah. Hard Rock gamblers, we love oh, to lose money. Love it. Yes. So uh, according to the Hard Rock app, again, we taped this on Wednesday, so it might change. Okay. Who knows? Uh, they have Buffalo, six-point favorites, the over-under 49. 49. Over. I'm going over as well. Over. Yep. Well, let's see some score predictions. All right, so this is what's going to happen. Okay, wait, let me just put, is there going to be a massive snowstorm in Buffalo this no, weekend? No, no, no. Uh, Mike actually said during the interview, it's supposed to be around like 50s, 60s. Beautiful, beautiful for fall Buffalo. Weather. He said, that's what he said, beautiful Smell weather. Smell of barbecue in the background. Chicken um, wing. Buffalo wings. Freshly broken No icicles tables. hanging off the tables no, or vans or whatever. Like so, oh, yeah. Okay, so good all conditions. right. So I'm going to say... I, I've, I've picked against the Dolphins 
Uh, sorry, I've picked uh, for the Dolphins, Dolphins in every podcast so far and have not had much luck. So just for that alone, I'm going to pick against the Dolphins. A little reverse psychology okay. here. Uh, okay. I think Tua and Josh Allen are going to have an absolute shootout. shootout. That's what That I know for sure. Uh, we picked the over, right? But uh, I have a feeling that uh, the Bills will break the hearts of Dolphin fans who travel to Orchard Park. They're going to fall just short. I think that six line makes a lot of sense. So, uh, you know, I don't know, let's say 42 to 35. Wow. 42 to 35. I'm going to say I'm impressed because like that 42 to 35 that's honest, a crazy honestly score. like that crazy was exactly score. what I was going to pick. Yeah, really? I, yes, I, yeah. I, I That was hate, the exact score? I hate you. That was the same score. I don't really hate that man. Uh yes, I, I, honestly I I If this happens. It's another it's another week of Tua fitting into the offense. I don't really trust any of these defenses. You look at both offenses. Tua getting Tyreek in the game early. Yeah. I want him I do want to see him get Jalen Waddle in the, involved a little bit more. Really not that great against Arizona. And then you look at the Bills offense. Um, Keon Coleman's breaking out finally. Obviously, they have Amari Cooper. James Cook. Uh, we haven't even mentioned James Cook. He's right, just James like, Cook. He scores at Shakir, least three he's working his, touchdowns a game. Week, working in the way off into the offense. So, honestly, I really do see a shootout here in Buffalo. But I can't really go against the Josh Allen black cat magic against, uh, against the Dolphins. So. Yeah. yeah, well, honestly, though, if you did that noise in front of Josh Allen, he might, he might have to take the game off. Every time he's about to pass. Like fly, this man to Buff- fly this man to Buffalo right now. So, yeah, I'm going to high score. I'm going, um, I'm going 40, uh, 42-35. Going- Same score. Right. That's going incredible. Well. I'm going Bills as well. Right, Bills as well. Then I'll go 42-35 Miami Dolphins. Hell. What was your, what was your final? We're going to go 42-35 Dolphins. Honestly, is there anything spookier than us picking the same exact score? That's how we're going to do it. That is crazy. That's like in the movie Poltergeist when the mom (laughs) walks away and then she comes back and looks around and all the chairs are in a pyramid on the... Just not an end of the Halloween Uh, reference. Have you seen Poltergeist? No. No. Come on! Everybody Have you seen E.T.? Yeah, Yeah, I've seen E.T. That's a Halloween movie. Fun home. Oh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to 55. episode 8. Eat all the candy you can this weekend. Don't let anybody judge you. I'm 32 years old. Mm-hmm. I am going to be trick-or-treating. Well, not really. I'll be sitting on the front porch eating my own candy, but yeah. yeah, you get it. Don't do that whole thing where you trick your kids that you ate all your candy in the morning. Jimmy Kimmel started that whole thing. Also, don't eat don't eat, don't eat the good candies, dude. Yeah. Save the Reese's and the good candies. Like, yeah. if you're a parent, just eat the damn licorice and call it a day. Great oh, advice. Wow. Great advice from a kid who trick-or-treated uh, two years ago, I think, right, Max? That's last year. Not last year. Okay. All right, that's our Halloween episode. That's it. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and go Dolphins. Happy birthday, Max. Best Florida Sports Podcast drops every Thursday morning. Listen on your favorite platform or watch on YouTube.